is certainly taking center stage on the campaign trail this week. You get Hillary Clinton releasing a new ad now, and she is blasting Donald Trump's response to the whole deal. Uh, here she is. Watch. Global markets are plummeting. Every president is tested by world events. But Donald Trump thinks about how his golf resort can profit from them. When the pound goes down, more people are coming to Turnberry. Stocks tank around the world. Brand new sprinkler system, the highest level. He's talking about his new sprinkler system. In a volatile world, the last thing we need is a volatile president. Oh, of course, those comments were clearly taken out of context, right? But isn't that what politicians do? Uh, Trump had forecasted essentially this, saying that uh, he believed the UK should split from the EU, but you don't hear Hillary Clinton talking about any of that. Uh, so just exactly what are the similarities right now between what Donald Trump said he sees in the United States that is similar to the UK? Joining me right now, Leslie Marshall, a progressive radio host and Fox News contributor, and Hogan Gidley, the former communications director for the Huckabee campaign. Hogan, you got to love that campaign commercial, right? I mean, <clears throat> you didn't hear uh, anything other than just the brief comment about what it meant for Turnberry, which, by the way, when a currency goes down, sometimes that is good news for the country in which that currency is going down because it means they can sell more products overseas. It's one of the reasons why we get nervous about a strong dollar, Hogan. Absolutely. And what's interesting about the ad, it's the attack ad of Hillary Clinton that she's been talking about for a long time. It's the tone and temperament of Donald Trump makes him ineligible, ineligible to be president mm -hmm. of the United States. And while that's a consistent message, it's completely tone deaf because the American people are, are sick and tired of D.C. decorum. What they want is someone who understands the economy. And what we've seen from every poll, regardless of where they are, Hillary beats Trump in a lot of them, but doesn't beat him on the economy. He knows how to create jobs. He knows economics. And he's going to protect the American worker who's been kicked in the teeth for the better part of 30 years. Yeah. People understand that over here. That's why they're gravitating toward him. And that's his message that's actually effective. It's See, not I, and one of the things I find so about amazing about all this, right, is that it seems as though Hillary Clinton is promoting a very sort of traditional Republican message. Free trade. It's great for everybody. Everybody will benefit from globalization. But the concern nowadays, and we heard Bill Gross, legendary bond investor, say this to me, Leslie, on Friday. He said the problem with all this globalization is that it benefits those who have capital. It benefits corporations. But you know what? Your middle class, they wind up with uh, a bad lot because they lose their job and they lose their spending power. And an economy cannot be sustained without the middle class. Why is she on the wrong side of this argument from what one would think she would typically do? I don't think she's on the wrong side. I think there is, whether you like her or not, the United States is and has been and will be a leader in the global economy. With regard to Brexit, you have small companies right there in New York, Trish. You have the Brooklyn Brewery, who exports a number of their beers to pubs overseas. So it's not just huge corporations that are affected by this, unlike Donald They're Trump. They're still going to export those the beers. American Trust people. me. They're going to still export the beers. Well, that's not going see. anywhere. We will see. No, that's we, not going. I mean, see. that's a silly then, argument, Leslie. I'm sorry. But, you know, if you do business with a company in the U.K., you're not going to suddenly stop doing business with them because of this. I mean, this is what the previous guest, Art Laffer, was saying. People have this completely blown out of proportion. Hogan, again, back to this idea of who capitalizes on this the most. Can Trump run with it? Absolutely. Look, the top 10 percent of wage earners in this country have all seen a pay increase under Barack Obama. That means the rest of us, the 90 percent, we've seen a wage decrease. We have lost income in this country under this president. Uh, Donald Trump knows that. And people are angry at the establishment. And Hillary Clinton is the embodiment of that it, establishment. It seems to Look, me, again, as though she's tone deaf on this story. Leslie, I mean, you, you, yeah. if you were consulting her, is there not a way for her to massage this message a little better so she looks like she's sticking up for the little guy? I don't feel that she's not. I mean, this is not somebody who says that wages are too high. This is not somebody that turns her back on people who want an increased minimum wage to 15 an hour. And this is not somebody who says, like Donald Trump, Brexit doesn't affect Americans. Well, ask anybody who has any kind of money, whether 401k or any other retirement or savings in the market. When you look at what's happening with the markets right now, they feel affected. So I don't think that her message is wrong. And, and quite frankly, although that is an area where she has some trouble, if we looked at coal miners in West Virginia as an example, um, 
Um, I do think as we get closer, the people are going to see that yeah, it's not just about the economy, as these polls show, that they feel mm. that she would make a better leader with the economy as Look, well. Look, I, I think she's got a lot of work to do on this. I mean, especially when you consider what an advocate she was for the Trans-Pacific Trade Partnership. She's got a Absolutely. lot to overcome. Leslie Hogan, stay with me. we got a lot coming up, everyone. The never All right, the problems continue for Donald Trump right now. You get new polls that show Hillary Clinton is widening her lead against the presumptive Republican nominee. However, we should point out those polls were taken before news of Britain's exit from the EU came out. Meanwhile, you get the Never Trump movement, uh, which is not ready to throw in the towel quite yet. They're working now to save room on ballots across the country for a candidate that they don't yet have, uh, that has not yet been named. But they're working on it. This comes on the heels of a Virginia delegate who is suing to become unbound, saying his right to free speech is being violated. And Politico is reporting that the party's struggling to find Republican leaders willing to take a speaking spot at next month's convention, not to mention the lack of fundraising. He doesn't have the money that Hillary Clinton does. Leslie Marshall and Hogan Gidley are back with me. Hogan, why can't the party seem to embrace their candidate? They just don't like the fact that they can't control Donald Trump. Uh, for so long, uh, the rank-and-file Republicans have been force-fed an establishment candidate we didn't like, we didn't, didn't want, and now, for some reason, they're upset that they're on the outside looking in, saying, we've got a guy here we can't control. Mm -hmm. This happens uh, so rarely in politics, and right now, Donald Trump is, is the leader of a movement. He's got more votes than anybody in the history of Republican presidential primary politics, and they're all flummoxed by it, and they don't know what to do, and this never-Trump movement is as ill-conceived as it is clunky. It's not going anywhere. No one on the rules committee is on it. It's not going to change. And right now, Donald Trump is going to be the nominee of the party. And it's tough luck for those on the outside and the establishment looking yeah, at but us. It's going, not good for him, right? I mean, Leslie, want? you know, you don't want members of your own party taking shots at you at a time when you need people to be coalescing around you. Oh, I agree. And I have to say, it goes far beyond what we just heard. You have states that are notoriously red, like Arizona, Utah, even looking at North Carolina, that may turn blue and just skip purple. Uh, you have people who, this is not a primary coming up in November. It's a general election, very different. You have people who do not feel that Donald Trump not only embodies the Republican Party, but doesn't share their vision for the party in the future, mm -hmm. nor does it share the values that the party has and had yet, in the past and continues and to yet. want. But, into the future. And yet, isn't this what we're talking about, this almost realignment of the campaigns? I mean, when I hear Hillary Clinton yeah. talking about free trade and globalization, and I hear Donald Trump sort of given the union line, which is that, no, these are taking jobs away from uh, hardworking Americans. I'm just wondering if you actually are going to see a lot of states flip the other way, Hogan. Well, the only person that could make a red state blue potentially is Hillary Clinton. But let's be honest, the only one who could make a blue state red is Donald Trump. He's ahead yeah. in Pennsylvania. He's tied in Wisconsin. Those are the blue collar workers, the coal industry, that have absolutely been crushed by the federal government. And Donald Trump seized on that like Hillary Clinton hasn't. This TPP thing is so repulsive to a lot of rank and file Republicans. It said it was going to create jobs, but then they put a provision in the bill that granted millions for the people who would lose jobs. Well, if it's going to create jobs, why are you putting safeguards in it if you're going to lose jobs? It yeah, makes no, I, I, no as sense. I said before, it's complete lunacy. I think that one uh, yeah. could come back to haunt her. Leslie Hogan, good to see both you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, we're watching a market Thanks. here, everyone, that uh, is uh, less.